variations, and adaptations. By the end of this video, you'll have a good explanation for why the adorable fennec fox on the left has such large ears, and why the midshipman fish, both males in the picture on the right, are such different sizes. Your objective will be to comprehend how variations and adaptations influence an organism's ability to survive and reproduce. In this video, when you see the note-taking symbol, make sure you are taking notes in detail. Get all your vocabulary and main ideas recorded. When you see the thinking animation, that's a good time to listen, engage, think, and write down main ideas. To start, it's important to know that all organisms are in a competition to do two things. First, organisms need to survive, which means that they have to find resources like food, water, and shelter. Additionally, they need to avoid predation. The second thing is, organisms are in competition to reproduce. All organisms try to create as many viable offspring as possible. In this case, viable means offspring that are able to also reproduce. So all organisms are in a competition to survive, it means live, and reproduce to have offspring. However, in any environment, there's simply not enough resources. There's not enough food or water or shelter. And because of that, organisms have to compete. They're fighting for the food, water, or shelter, or they're fighting for mates to reproduce. However, in a population, not all the organisms are the same. There's a variety of traits all the organisms are slightly different. We call the variety of traits variations. So again, a variation is a trait that is different in members of the same species. You'll notice the three zebra on the left look very similar, but they're slightly different. Those are variations. And these slight differences, these slight variations, cause certain individuals to be better at surviving or reproducing. So again, one of those zebra is going to be slightly better at surviving, or it's slightly more attractive and will be more likely to reproduce. Now this is a bit of a reminder. But what is the source of variation? Well, it's important to remember that all organisms have DNA and that genes are on DNA and genes code for traits. Perhaps the most important piece of information is that genes can be passed from parent to offspring. Another way to say that is that the offspring inherit their genes from their parents. Also recall that variation of species are caused by differences in genes. Mutations change genes, and because mutations change genes, Mutations also can change traits. Finally, mutations happen frequently. During reproduction, mutations happen fairly regularly, and those mutations change genes, and changes in genes can alter traits. That is what causes the variety of traits in a population. So how does it work on an individual level? Well, let's go back to the fennec fox example. 
Fennec fox are fox that live in a desert, and they use their ears for two things. First, for hunting, they use their large ears to hear their prey, and second, they use their large ears to cool down. Larger ears are more advantageous. Larger ears let the fox hear better to hunt, and they help the fox cool down. So the fox on the left has ears that are 4.5 centimeters long. The fox on the right has ears that is 6 centimeters long, which means the fox on the left is less likely to survive and reproduce, while the fox on the right is more likely to survive and reproduce. Again, the variety of traits are their ear size, and the fox on the right has a variety that helps it survive, right? Maybe it can hunt better or cool down more quickly. And because of that, it's more likely to reproduce. What about those fish we were talking about? Well, these fish are odd in that they build nests and the males of the fish protect the nests and bigger males are more likely to reproduce. They attract more females. So in this example, we have two male fish. One is 20 centimeters long, the other is five centimeters long, and you guessed it, the fish on the left is more likely to survive and reproduce. It's, it's larger, probably captures more prey. Because it's larger, more females want to reproduce with this male. And the fish on the right is less likely to survive and reproduce because the females aren't as attracted to it. So again, the variety in this case is size, and the fish on the left has a trait that is more advantageous. But how do these variations affect populations? Well, for that, we gotta remember that genes can be passed from parents to offspring. Again, any population will have a variety of traits. And the most helpful variation is called an adaptation. The adaptation is the variation that is the most successful, the most likely to lead to an organism to survive and reproduce. And because variations are genetic, Adaptations can be inherited by the offspring of successful organisms. Another way to think about it is that successful parents pass on their traits to their offspring, and those offspring are likely to have those successful traits. Let's look at this in a diagram form. Imagine we have an organism that is this shade of brown, and it reproduces. And because mutations happen frequently. The organism has three offspring with three slightly different colors. Now in the environment, they all can't survive and reproduce. And it turns out that the lightest shade is unfavorable. So the two darker shades survive and reproduce and they have offspring. And because there's mutations, their offspring inherit the genes and a few are mutated and have slightly different variations. And again, not all of them can survive and reproduce. The more successful adaptations, which are the successful traits, are passed on. And over time, the population will slowly start to become this darker and darker color because the successful parents are the darker color. They pass on that gene to their offspring and over time, that gene, those traits, become more and more prevalent within the population. So it turns out that organisms with advantageous traits, helpful traits, are more likely to survive and reproduce. Because they are better at surviving and reproducing, they will pass on those successful traits and over time, more and more of the population will have those successful adaptations. On the other hand, organisms with disadvantageous traits are less likely to survive and reproduce. 
which means that they are unlikely to pass on their traits. And so over time, there less and less of the population will have those traits. But again, let's go back to our, our examples. So here's our fennec fox. Again, the fennec fox, it's helpful to have large ears to help hunt and to cool down. The graph on the right shows the average ear size of fennec fox from a million years ago. And remember, larger ears are helpful, and so over time, the fennec fox with the larger ears reproduced. They passed on the trait for larger ears, and today, fennec fox, the average fennec fox, has larger ears than the average fennec fox from a long time ago. The population changed. Well, what about those fish? Again, for the midshipman fish, larger males are more attractive and more likely to reproduce. However, in these fish, a weird adaptation occurred. In these fish, like you would expect, the average male got larger. But there was also a second variety that was actually very successful, and it was much, much smaller males. So in this population, there are really large males called garters. They will guard the nest and are very attractive to the female fish. But there's also very small males called sneakers. And like their name implies, they sneak into the nest of the larger males and will actually reproduce with the female's eggs behind the garters' backs. So in this case, there are two traits that are very advantageous. So very small males and then very large males. That middle range of size is actually disadvantageous. And so you have more population of large and small fish. And finally, a plant example. On the left is a normal cactus. And on the right is a mutated cactus called a crested cactus. And the crested cactus looks cool, but unfortunately it makes the cactus very top heavy. And so during a heavy rain, many of these cacti fall over. When the cactus fall over, they unfortunately die. And so therefore, since that is a disadvantageous trait, you can see in the graph that the crested cactus are very, very unlikely to be in the population. That trait is disadvantageous and so there will be less of that trait in the population. The normal cactus is advantageous, and so its percentage in the population is much higher.